in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed he says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all that some man must build the horse is prepared for battle but safety is of the lord but it does not stop you from preparing the horse are we together now i expect every gentleman here to start planning married or not sit down and plan here's what scripture says when i was a child i thought like a child correct i understood like a child i acted like a child he says now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things some of you that's what will happen in your retreat you have to sit down and tell yourself this childishness in my life must go forever comma this foolishness in my life must go forever this stupidity in my life must go forever somehow we have this belief that because god is able without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of god things will just happen just like that we are tired of irresponsible fathers we are tired of irresponsible gentlemen we are tired of nuisances to society a gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents blasting in tongues but depending there it should not be it should not be there is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life is that true i'm speaking to everybody but i'm speaking especially to our gentlemen please let's go back to god and plan this rat race of visiting everybody today you are here tomorrow you are there my brother what are you doing with your life you say it is well no it's not well you sit down and plan what are you doing with your life I want to marry apostle wonderful and eat what show me the blueprint of of the, not the timetable of your cooking the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family especially do you know because in africa let's be very honest if i handpick everybody here almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him is that true leave the ladies gentlemen i'm talking to you i'm coming to the ladies pick anybody at random there is one neighbor one one cousin you know one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed so gone are the days where you say i have enough for myself no you must flog it out plan 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances even if they give you a message on rapture you say I'm born again I have a goal I'm studying on finances I'm spending the month of February to study on faith on faith I'm studying the month of uh, the month of March to study on the anointing I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand there are teachings the media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings if it is success if it's your spiritual growth character development you know salvation etc whatever it is 
there are teachings and they are all free come with them you must plan number four the fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs write it down we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs all the 31 chapters study not read there's a difference between studying and reading you can take two two chapters and finish it in 15 days you didn't study you read you glance through let's use this break period to extensively study the book of proverbs go online there are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book study carefully don't read to finish read to understand the book of proverbs the lord put this in my heart was studying the fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again it's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year they will, I will I will have to commit to something that cost me both to God and to the ministry every year without fail I do this I'm not talking of uh, 10 naira 20 naira something that even you you will stand and say Lord I give you thanks between you and God why are you doing that you are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation this has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money and this is a mistake that men of God make when it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice you see them expressing a lot of desperation I, I always say this every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members it is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which you are complying with the precepts of the kingdom are we together these five things I promise you that when you do them you will be ready for an amazing 2018 number one Thanksgiving number two review that number two for me is one of the most important you have to review don't just wait and say ah apostle send us the prophetic word for next year my body is shaking I need to know what is the prophetic word this is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again and, 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 and then again and again and they find out that the year remains the same different words coming but there's no progress in our lives so go back get a notebook don't just get a little piece of paper it's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny get a notebook and sit down and write these things out come up by the spirit one of the things i can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the holy spirit will speak to you he will correct you he will applaud you he will rebuke you he will encourage you he will challenge you let the chastening of the Lord not be something that you resent. Whatever happens in that secret place, embrace it as a refiner's fire. It is going to be the key to your next level. Is that true? Praise God. So you do this. This is my first encouragement for us tonight. These five things. The Lord put it in my heart and I felt to share with us to help us maximize our time. Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. 
hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law Solomon is teaching us here for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the heart wisdom understanding forsake her not and she shall preserve thee take note the benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee seven says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 says exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor who will bring you wisdom and understanding not just wisdom wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her we are reading to verse 10 verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear O my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of Christ wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to profess scriptural solution there are cultural solutions to life's problems there are occultic solutions to life problems there are emotional solutions to life's problems none of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions but the wisdom of god the wisdom of god i have pursued the wisdom of god with my life because when I was exposed to my own folly and the fact that I am so limited and the consequences of foolishness the Bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of God's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind I like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives i want us to carefully examine the things that we do the degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of god every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of god it's an uncomfortable truth but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom i am ever ready to be shown by God the areas in my life where I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God it doesn't embarrass me I want to know I search for it like one who is looking for treasure 
if you do not contend for wisdom your life will be an unending circle of pain an unending circle of regrets an unending circle of many things most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. It says he's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, it makes you wise. The word of God teaches you how to relate with difficult people. The word of God teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble. The word of God teaches you how to respond to unbelievers. Many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith. Wisdom teaches you how to communicate. Wisdom teaches you that when you are angry, be silent because every Every time you speak you will speak in the flesh there are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira they uttered words that they are still paying for it today are we together our challenges dr mike modok will say there is no money problem anywhere and i agree with him most of our challenges because you see we are victims of our understanding and most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge our wisdom our understanding guess what the bible says it says true wisdom a house is built then it says by understanding it is established the firmness of that house is a product of understanding it says true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing we must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom choose the way of the Lord. listen there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate this is the book that coordinates our success there is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision making process will be accurate even if you study psychology it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions i have lost confidence in myself outside of the world it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world listen this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word. I have meticulously built my life on this word. I don't trust any other thing that is not this word. I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year. I want you to return to a place 
where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word. Many of us pray, but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom. Our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word. It's very clear that we are not being governed by the word. I can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication. I'm not talking of linguistic excellence. I'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words. I see your behavior. I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance, when responding to your critic, your critic already knows the truth. Don't try to explain. It's a waste of time. You don't respond to critics by verbal communication. You respond to critics by consistency. Consistency of your results. Is that true? When I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance, it is because we have not seen the deception of pride. The deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away. That's exactly what pride does. I love the word of God. I stopped reading my Bible to finish it. I stopped reading my Bible to cram scriptures. I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong see i tried it on my own wife look at how she's behaving now you tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you your prayer stopped being answered that's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce you see let me tell you something if I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered as simple as neatness I know you don't have respect for the word of God if the word of God can purge your spirit then your life will reflect it you cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty unkept looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter no sir no sir the word of god will make you to buy an iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings there is a way kings behave and the bible tells you that you have been made according to revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto god a kingdom of kings and priests so you speak like a king you act like a king is that true it is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa. Christian versus Yoruba. Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture most of us our lives have been destroyed because of our our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenants that are completely anti-christ so although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual but the the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight god in our lives i have no loyalty to anything that is not of God this is it this is my new culture 
scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe. I'm not saying culture is bad in itself, but trust me, there are demonic and satanic areas. There are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves, but I tell you there are weights. A weight is something that can provide an impedance. It can stop your movement. It says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life, in our place, we don't do this. In our place, women cannot talk. Who is this woman preaching? I can't listen to her because in our, which your place? Who invented it? Oh, God is speaking. I will listen. In our place, young people don't talk to old people, even respectfully, even under the anointing. Are you seeing that now? It is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom. They drove children from coming to Jesus. Something about their culture taught them that. And Jesus said, ah, 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 let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. He said, for, for such. That means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning. That until you become like one of these, not childish, but childlike. Very malleable in your faith and understanding. He says, the kingdom is for such. Are you getting blessed tonight? Get wisdom, get understanding, make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus, although I was born in so 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 place, I was born under so 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 condition. By the grace of God, my children will not live under that kind of condition. The Lord, by His Spirit, will lift me. It's not about Nazareth, it's not about where you come from, it's about your ability to walk with the Word of God and bring that transformation hallelujah by the grace of god i have made it a personal commitment as a minister that i will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors never never you will never see me do that i love my people wonderful people love my region where i come from but by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We are all in Christ. So I cannot see IK and say IK is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta and I say you are my person, be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences ah, 
Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai. It is the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry, you see that? Living a fake and a foolish life, that's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children. The Bible says it. The Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing. That there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing. Regardless of whatever opinions are available scripture cannot be broken it is by these two immutable things god swore his word will not be broken heaven and earth will pass away but brothers and sisters men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance nations and kingdoms will rise and fall but the word of god remains consistent one of the greatest fears if i would say in my life is to find out that at the end of my life i believe they lie I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he will tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. This ministry is a tithing ministry. I'm a tithing person. There is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us. That's why there is no amount of recession. I say it with all humility. By the grace of God Almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of God. For he said, I will build my church. And if you allow me to build it, I will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail. This is the wisdom of God. I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is it is the word of god that gave me that wisdom so i can insult a man because i do not like something about him yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me it is for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep there are many people who would have cheaply received miracles but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them the scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel he didn't tell you the vessel is golden he said the vessel is earthen so he can be angry like elijah or temperous like moses they still are anointed when i found out I don't have any problem with any man of God. You never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I 
learned from this scripture that as a man, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I stop wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here. Gone are the days where people try to buy suit, buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back. Have you seen territories like that? They try to do physical things. They have not educated the people in that environment. Then they make tap. In six months, they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment. No sensitization. So I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes, buying shoes, buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me. Oh my God, and how, how true. This is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture. The supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding it is true are we together the wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree even it be cut short in our society where we are we are more than happy to conclude on people you look at someone and say, this guy used to be an arm robber. There's no hope for him. But when you study the word of God, the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight. And my Bible says that rejected stone. Ha! Ah, that rejected stone. I'm speaking to someone in your family. And all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people. There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality and right now they are not they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them they maintain their spiritual life by themselves but there are people who started this year saying lord if you are looking for any vessel can you use this drunkard and god said that's all i want come and right now as i speak to you they are in various stages around the world setting up place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things when you understand this you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people you don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say oh dear poor woman because god can pick someone you see the word of god makes men wise the way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture whether it is a poor man a rich man I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. Go, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the Baba of Joseph knew he was babbing the prime minister, In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. lift up our hands and bless his name Jesus we bless you Jesus we lift up your name Jesus we lift up your name Jesus we lift up your name lift up your hands and worship him Jesus we lift up Worship him, lift your hands, coin on your let's honor the king. Jesus, we lift up your name. Do you be all your 
preservation we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your faithfulness Lord we thank you you are dependable you are reliable we make a miracle walk Father, people call this year many names. 
but the name you gave us you demonstrated that it was so we thank you we thank you for us as a family we have seen your hand we have seen your majesty you have multiplied us you have increased us thank you for your grace that is who you are truly that is who you are you crown our year with goodness and we thank you we thank you for those of you who what we are doing seems strange this is the secret behind the finger of God Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him there is no level of intellect there is no level of wisdom there is no level of human science that is capable to do this father we are not ashamed be glorified be glorified joshua selman is nothing without your wisdom absolutely 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 thank you for your grace thank you for your word thank you because you are true dependable reliable faithful we return thanks we return thanks for sparing our lives for triumphing over death over sickness and infirmity for turning the lives of people around thank you thank you for transforming millions around the world thank you for giving our teachings wings to move beyond the limitations of time thank you for the prevailing power of your word for access to the mysteries of the kingdom thank you for the anointing of the holy ghost thank you for wealth and prosperity thank you for the effectual walking of your grace thank you Jesus 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 hallelujah you see our our generation is a very arrogant generation we are very embarrassed whenever the spotlight leaves us whether it is to god or to any other person we frown at it there is such a crave in our generation for power for honor for recognition so when times come like this when we all become ushers to bow before the king sometimes because of our little achievements here and there we pride ourselves into believing that it was a product of our wisdom but every wise man who knows God knows how weak a man is when you see God's result separate the man from the result this is the finger of God this is the finger of God this is the finger of God 45 nations of the world this is the finger of God light in the darkness that is who you are Jesus thank you when you speak it is within your power to make it happen forgive us for our unbelief forgive us for thinking you are a man you are God the creator of the ends of the earth I wish I told you people to rehearse this song. 
Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? The name above every other name. to you just take your eyes away and with childlike foolishness say lord i believe if god tells you i am lifting you on the wings of eagles say lord i believe don't ask and say who is my uncle uh -uh. i believe i believe this ministry is a testimony of what god can do when he finds men who can dare to believe him jesus we give you the praise in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's honor our worship team. Come on. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, guys, I am so proud of you. You do not imagine. I was talking to a Jimmy and said, look, very soon, we're going to start our own record label. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. And by the Spirit of God, it will bless the nations of the world. And you have the opportunity to go around the nations of the world and be a blessing to the body in the name of Jesus. Let's honor them one more time. Thank you. Manasseh is with us today. Bless him. The bishop is around. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone. We'll be very brief tonight. We're going to pray. I want to start tonight, um, I'm going to give us a very strong admonition which also doubles as an instruction. So please be ready to write. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us. 
it's been a wonderful year and god has been faithful but let me remind you that the year is not over like bishop david oyedeko will say he made the heavens and the earth in seven days i don't care whether it's prophetic seven days or real seven days my faith can agree on the one i want god to move on praise the lord whether it's a thousand years seven days i know that even if it is in one day it says as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a child you say have you ever heard this proverb that a woman will give birth in one day be pregnant in one day and give birth in one day that's god for you hallelujah i still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come i truly believe god has done things that has brought tears out of my eyes but i believe for myself that between now and december 31st i am yet to see the hand of god so but i want to encourage us even as we begin to set the pace for 2018 if you will be there you can write <laughs> no gone are the days where people in in a false show of humility they say we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie don't, don't let any man um, bring that nonsense around your table no you can believe there are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life the longevity of your life and the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat thank you jesus i want to give you a few things that the lord put in my heart to encourage us really this is this is what i'm here to do this night and then a few other things that god will grant us grace to do now most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat most christians are not taught that a retreat is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer we teach fasting we teach prayer but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of god it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when satan gets at people when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you are moving it's difficult for satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we are having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have a workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from god when you are alone with him are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it retreats very important end of year retreats very important you must take out time end of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours that is laziness you didn't have a retreat you just had a quiet time a retreat should be at least minimum two solid days you can't spend one day one day alone should be dedicated to thanksgiving is god speaking to us so every single one of us and those following online we must take out time to have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one
thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of god's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank god mention them one by one let me tell you i know this about god he never gets tired hearing people thank him lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you last year it was without blue band you added blue band this year so you observed it you see that not lord you thank you for the food you gave me that's a careless thanksgiving father thank you last year it was tap water now you gave me bottled water thank you that means you are careful you are forgetting not his benefits when it comes to requests we are very meticulous lord give me one two three four then when it comes to thanksgiving we say lord even me i can't remember are you not god don't you know everything I, I just thank you for everything let's go to another prayer request and god says how selfish selfish when you thank god mention things one by one lord thank you i was on my way to kaduna and the car wanted to capsize you saved me thank you and god said ah, this happened january say lord i didn't forget you are too faithful for me to forget that event he said you remember this for me get ready for another dimension thanksgiving write it down thanksgiving we must take out quality time to thank him number two i'm teaching you how to maximize to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year 2017 now that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and i'll dwell here a bit to help us understand i want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for god review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did I acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance? Did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die? Are we together now? Yes, it matters that we not only grow spiritually, but we sustain the ability to be useful. We must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment so you review it what books did i read what do i know about leadership did i learn anything did i build my mind what do i know about mindsets am i still carrying my village in my head moving around with it am i still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure am i still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life is God helping us? Number three, review 
how much you have taken care of your body your health in a retreat yes sir that's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is God this body belongs to him for some of us 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year lord i apologize i ate anyhow i did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews because you need this body to last very long are we together gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life and you see someone of 32 looking like 50 they ask him how old are you? He said, I will be 33 next year. Say, well, so why are you looking at his a condition make crayfish bed? No, you are not a crayfish. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. Some of those sayings, we must start getting them out of the body of Christ. They look very nice, but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty is carelessness write that word down this is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat many people's lives are destroyed including their health because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which God brought you review your purpose your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat Lord I look at the compass of my destiny did I make progress this year can I say from prophecy to manifestation I have moved forward you see this assignment and purpose thing you, you, you hardly even hear it again people don't talk about it it says lo I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will the reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose if purpose does not occupy you anybody can call you any day and say are you free sir yes come and follow me somewhere god designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment this idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent, um, I would say, trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward. Motions like sitting on a rocking chair. The chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress. Oftentimes Jesus would retreat and look, okay, I must be here, I must be there. Your assignment, your purpose. I don't know my purpose, but you can look at your service in the house of God. Use that as a template. What was your level of commitment? What was your level of diligence? Are we together? Very important. This is what I do during my retreats number four the fourth area number what number five i beg your pardon your finance write it down your finances you have to flog it out in the secret place are we together now you've looked at your spiritual life mental transformation your body your health is that true and then your assignment then your finances we are very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance i'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life i've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost it's not just bad it's a cost it's one of the most distracting strategies of satan when a man spends all your life looking for money it's a cost Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building 
this chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of satan has made us to leave our purpose there are people called as prophets and apostles but they only realize one week to their death they spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it please let me say it again and again do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life there is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything, money. You say, Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Hmm. Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year or oh, I just had it and it didn't work you will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately immediately so you must be sincere this year God gave me one million naira God gave me hundred thousand naira what did I do with it I made a mistake I gave hundred thousand naira to four one niners you don't jump that what is the lesson that I have to learn there is that true God gave me two hundred thousand I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested oh Lord forgive me don't say it's all right ask for forgiveness because that is sin is that true when God gives you resources and you waste it if nobody has told you it is sin believe me Lord I gave you offering of 10 10 naira I gave you offering of 20 20 naira but my average dinner was 2000 naira it's a sign that you are not a serious believer I know you think I'm not talking about money you know that God has helped us but it's important these are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God, and that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly, what is sparingly? Small, scanty, shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life and the Lord rebuked me and I made up my mind and I made a vow there is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes yes it's true it's true it's true so review it what do you understand about finances review it if all you know about finances is business and job is better you have to sit down and flog that area because neither of them in themselves will give you money number six relationships the sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships marital relationships career relationships business relationships destiny relationships some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations associations that should have nothing nothing to do with our lives is all this uh, is our tribe is our church is our this 
Is that true? The Bible says, He that walks with the wise will be wise, but it says the companion of fools will be destroyed. Relationships, it matters. Review them. Review them. Who did you give access to this year whose presence destroyed your productivity? Who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results? Who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life? Some of you, your relationship here, you even need to go back and check with the Holy Spirit. What degree of access did you give him? Relationships. Now, when you review these six areas, let me be honest with you. Your entire life revolves around these six areas. Your spiritual life, your mental development, your health and physical well-being. Is that true? Your assignment, your career, whatever it is, your financial resources and your relationships. There is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area. Usually what I do is that I scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and I must answer why. I won't just say I will improve. Why? Why was this the best and why was this the worst? If your relationships for inside, for instance, was the worst this year, what don't I know about friendship? What have I not learned? Maybe I'm neglecting honor. Maybe I'm not valuable enough. Maybe I'm too much of a talkative. Maybe I'm not somebody who can be committed secret. Maybe I'm somebody who is not friendly. Maybe I'm someone who is jealous. Lord, help me. You write it down. Are you seeing how people grow in retreat? You never come out of that experience the same. No, sir. People jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again. And you see, the Bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin. If your wine skin is old, nothing new will ever come. You will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting, shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion. He said, go and borrow vessels. Borrow the wine skin. Borrow not a few. And the more the wine skin, the more capacity for the anointing to function is that true you must take out time so this is the second thing you do the first thing let's review Thanksgiving Thanksgiving then the second thing you do is a review of the year I gave you six aspects of your review the third thing is that you must plan for 2018 plan for 2018 I'll tell you how to plan shortly please write this it's very important plan for 2018 it's amazing how many people don't plan they think just because they are writing what they would do they think that's planning that's not planning many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year less than one percent of them ever happen that's not a goal how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed, set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them. I am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing, it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing God. Remember, your success is based on your partnership. You are not going to plan alone, for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. You must plan and add a scriptural backing. That means a spiritual basis for committing God in those areas. And then you must add time targets to them. Every day is not conducive for everything. No, sir. When you buy a product, if we pick up this bottle of water, you will see there's a little inscription there, the manufacturing date, and then they write something best before. In other words, to get the best of this, pro this product, it should be consumed within this time range. Putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them. The reason why I believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation. So we make it look like every day is conducive. No, sir.
if you build a house at 70 years it's not a testimony if you finish school at 60 years it's not a testimony is that true if a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years it's an unusual testimony it's because it's not supposed to be so is that true if god blesses you at 80 years who are you going to leave it for you will be angry and be frustrated so there are things that we must trust God to help us fast track in our life. Say amen. And let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little. Please plan. Turn to any brother seated near you and say, brother, plan. Just leave the sisters in one minute. Say, brother, plan. Listen. Spiritual people, spiritual people, are some of the poorest planners we have especially in this country we don't plan for our greatness we just hope and wish and pray bishop oyedeko said praying without planning is playing without knowing you have to be like nehemiah with one hand you are building but with another hand you are holding the sword both hands cannot hold the sword one hand is holding the sword and another hand is building he says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all that some man must build the horse is prepared for battle but safety is of the lord but it does not stop you from preparing the horse are we together now i expect every gentleman here to start planning married or not sit down and plan here's what scripture says when i was a child i thought like a child correct i understood like a child i acted like a child he says now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things some of you that's what will happen in your retreat you have to sit down and tell yourself this childishness in my life must go forever comma this foolishness in my life must go forever this stupidity in my life must go forever somehow we have this belief that because god is able without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of god things will just happen just like that we are tired of irresponsible fathers we are tired of irresponsible gentlemen we are tired of nuisances to society a gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents blasting in tongues but depending there it should not be it should not be there is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life is that true i'm speaking to everybody but i'm speaking especially to our gentlemen please let's go back to god and plan this rat race of visiting everybody today you are here tomorrow you are there my brother what are you doing with your life you say it is well no it's not well you sit down and plan what are you doing with your life Oh, I want to marry Apostle Wonderful and eat what? Show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking, the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family. Especially, do you know, because in Africa, let's be very honest, if I handpick everybody here, almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him is that true leave the ladies gentlemen i'm talking to you i'm coming to the ladies pick anybody at random there is one neighbor one one cousin you know one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed so gone are the days where you say i have enough for myself no you must flog it out plan 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 i will take the month of january to study only on finances even if they give you a message on rapture you say i'm born again i have a goal i'm studying on finances i'm spending the month of february to study on faith on faith i'm studying the month of uh, the month of march to study on the anointing 
I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith, individually, we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. We are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. All the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read. You glanced through. Let's use this break period to extensively study the book of Proverbs. Go online. There are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book. Study carefully. Don't read to finish. Read to understand. The book of Proverbs, the Lord put this in my heart while studying. The fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again it's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year they will, I will I will have have to commit to something that cost me both to God and to the ministry every year without fail I do this I'm not talking of uh, 10 naira 20 naira something that even you you will stand and say Lord I give you thanks between you and God why are you doing that you are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation this has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money and this is a mistake that men of god make when it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice you see them expressing a lot of desperation i i always say this every man of god's success is not based on the giving of members it is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which you are complying with the precepts of the kingdom are we together these five things i promise you that when you do them you will be ready for an amazing 2018 number one thanksgiving number two review that number two for me is one of the most important you have to review don't just wait and say ah apostle send us the prophetic word for next year my body is shaking i need to know what is the prophetic word this is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again and and and, and then again and again and they find out that the year remains the same different words coming but there's no progress in our lives so go back get a notebook don't just get a little piece of paper. It's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny. Get a notebook and sit down and write these things out. Come up by the Spirit. One of the things I can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will correct you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this
this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.